These were two sports that were out of season. But then, huh, you have the Women's World Cup, which you'll notice Nicole only said two things, and I only said two things because we're both in agreement that this is the biggest thing that happened this summer was U.S. Women's World Cup in Paris, France. It happened France. so long ago, though. I was oh like, oh, gosh. yeah, that happened this year. It's just, I, it's, it, I still think about it, like, almost every day. Like, my sister, Maddie, and I, we were, like, like I got my sister to watch sports this summer because of this Women's World Cup team. I actually hate to admit, but I did miss the final because I was driving home from uh, my grandparents' lake house. So I did miss the final, but I watched almost every other game because yeah. I, I still love soccer. Um, so... I can't believe we're saying U.S. women's soccer is a controversial topic, but it is in today's world. and Not, not really, but when you look at it, uh, apparently it is. Uh, Gabby, yeah. just give us, give us your rundown on everything you have here, because it is actually written under your name, so go, go for it. Well, here's it the away. thing. You, just, you start off, of course, with the talent on the field. This is a team that 20 years ago... You know, you have Mia Hamm. You have... Um, I love Mia Hamm. Yeah, you have these cultural icons. Hope Solo. Who, yeah, Hope Solo. You have cultural we'll, icons. We'll ignore everything else other than the fact that she played soccer. Go on. You li- you just... You have but these we'll cultural... But we'll acknowledge it. Go on. We'll acknowledge it. <laughs> but we will... We will for, for purpose of what we're talking about right now, we're going to ignore it. Yeah, Go exactly. On. But you, you just... You have these cultural icons who absolutely dominate on the field and then use that dominance for something bigger than themselves they are sacrificing their careers by going out and saying we want equal pay and we will threaten to not play until you give us equal pay and it's like you look at some of the girls on that team like Mallory Pugh Huh. Mallory Pugh was like 17 18 years old when they went to the Olympic Games back in 2016 and Mal Pugh even came out and said, "Yeah, I want nothing less than an Olympic gold or than a World Cup like gold medal. Like I want to win it because when they went to the Olympics three years ago, obviously she kind of got off. Like she, it wasn't they didn't get off to the best start. They ended up losing, I think, to Germany. But just complete dominance by a team that wait, deserves. Wait, you mean the last World Cup? Is in, that what well, you're... In, in Rio 2016? Oh, you're talking about Rio? Okay. Yeah. Like, from Rio, the growth that they made as a team. okay. And then, of course, Megan Rapinoe being the pink-haired goddess that she is. Um, My uh, my older sister, Maddie, was absolutely in love with her. I was absolutely in love with her. She captured the hearts of this country, and rightfully so, because of the performance she put on, you know, against Thailand and the performance that they put on in in the finals and everything. Like, it was just... It was iconic. It was absolutely iconic. This, These moments are what I'm going to tell my kids about one day. I'm going to say, you know, when, when I was in college, Carly this Lloyd was... Carly sipping the tea. Oh, my if Lord. If you didn't see and our that's Twitter... the real tea. If you didn't see our Twitter, I, I did change the uh, profile picture to that for at least a month, I feel like. I think, is it is that still our profile picture? I don't no, I, I changed it back. Yeah, you changed it back to the... Um, but I left it up for a month to the logo, but I, 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 changed, I changed that for... I, yeah. That, you go it, back, you'll find the tweet. I said, hello, this is our profile picture now. That's all. Yeah, that's, that's all. That's it. That's the tweet. And that's, yeah, and that's the T. Like, literally. It's just... And then you, you talk about, like, the scoring and the celebrations and stuff like that over Thailand. They won 13-0 in the opening match. I mean, this is just a team that knows no bounce. They don't believe that they should be stopped. They don't believe that there should be a cap on their greatness, both on and off the soccer field. Because they're not stopping now, obviously, with, uh, with like, the equal pay statutes and stuff like that. They're on, like, a world tour. And, honestly, funny little story, kind of a sad story. The day before I was going to Canada, they were playing in, um, they were playing at the Rose Bowl. And I was going to go with my sister. But then when I realized how late of a night it was going to be, I ended up having to miss the game. Because I had an early flight out to Victoria for national championships, which was kind of really really sad i watched the game like on tv and stuff it was amazing but uh honestly just a really I, really big like landmark summer by was, this team usa it was dominant and if you look at it the only teams they struggled against were in the quarterfinal and semifinal and that was france and england and the only and it's not even that they struggled it's just france and england are good teams especially france they were the team i was most worried about going into the world cup and both france and england played their hearts out but the u.s it just proved to be too much um i mean 
I, I, I loved every second of it. I think we can't ignore the elephant in the room. What did you think about... I think... I'll, I'll, go, I'll say what I think first. But the scoring and celebrations over Thailand, I don't think are a problem. I think maybe past the eighth goal, I might have had a little bit of a problem with the celebrations. Yeah. I, that whole act like you've been there before to me, I, I hate that argument. I don't care. Have fun. Um, I did think... You know, some of them were like maybe a little much, but if you don't want to, them to celebrate, don't let them score. And yeah, I think I think Thailand don't, owned up to that. They're like, yeah, we shouldn't have let them score. Yeah. So I mean, that's my take. If you don't, that's my. It was the same take I have with Cam Newton and his celebrations back in 2016. Yeah. If you don't want them to celebrate, don't let them score. It's oh not yeah. That, it's not. I've, it's not that absolutely. hard. Absolutely. And well, honestly, like my like one thought on it is, they always say it's like act like you've been there before. I've got news for you. If you've been there before, you've probably been there before one time in your entire life, and you'll probably only be there a maximum of three times in your entire life. If you, never, you are, you never know what yeah. could happen in the next four years. You literally don't know. Not everybody's going to be Mia Hamm or you know Megan Rapino, Carly or Lloyd, Carly Lloyd, or Alex Morgan, and play in three or four World Cups. That's not how the sport works. It comes. Was around... it Carly Lloyd that said to you, Alex Morgan? Now you're making me think. I go I'm on. Pretty sure it was. Lloyd Harley Lloyd. That's yeah. what I thought too. Sorry, go on. Well, anyways, it's just it's just frustrating because it's like you you look at people and you say like this is greatness on display. You need to a, a celebrate it and appreciate it while you have it before you regret not appreciating it while it was there because that's what you're going to end up doing. You're going to end up living with regret that you didn't appreciate it while it was there. This team is greatness on display and I pray that this country appreciates it while we have it.